Welcome to the If I Had More Time podcast at Mariner's Church. This podcast series invites you into a casual conversation with our senior pastor, Eric Geiger, and our teaching team to hear a few helpful insights and truths they wish they had time to include in the weekend message. Be sure that you have listened to this weekend's message prior to listening to the podcast so you get the most out of our current series. We hope you enjoy it. Thanks so much for joining us for the If I Had More Time podcast. I'm Liz (laughs) Garcia, and I'm here with our senior pastor, Eric Geiger. We're so excited to be kicking off our new series, James. Yes, and I'm excited to have a new microphone. I don't know if the people listening can I know can, can tell, but if you watch on YouTube, which we we, we post these on YouTube, mm-hmm. our, our team decided that mm-hmm. after a year of podcasting that we were going to keep the podcast and they would get official mics. Yes, I do feel very official. I, you know, we, we don't yeah. just spend money here at Mariners. You no, have to earn the new mic. <laughs> That's right, yes. You have to have a successful right. podcast for a year <laughs> before our executive pastor approves them begging for new mics. So I'm thankful. I'm thankful that Beth, you know, watches the expenses so well yes, that, that we right. just now are getting new mics. And you got, you guys have advocates behind the camera who are asking. They for were these saying the people too. need better yeah. sound. Yes. Get us new mics. Yes. We love it. We're very grateful. We are. <laughs> we did kick off our new series this weekend, James. Yes. And we have these amazing guides, the these uh, very series magazines. Title, James. James. Why Could, why fix when I why, broke? Why Would you call it anything other than just James? You know, I did wear the sweater today, too, specifically to To match match. this. Yeah, I'm feeling very So we we really are trying to get people to go to YouTube right now so they can see the new mic and the sweater. What else can we describe in the room? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man, I'm really, really excited. I am. It's it's refreshing. It's exciting to be in a book of the Bible again as a church. I mean... I love it. We teach God's word every single weekend. It is different, though, going through a book verse by verse. So will you share with us about what you're excited about, James? Why, James? Why did God put this on your heart, you think? I mapped mapped out James really, as you know, the listener knows, if they've been tracking with us for a while, that I I do a study break every July. So I mapped out James the last July. So Mm -hmm. not, not the... July that just happened, so but 2023 in July 2023 is when July. you thought, thought about James. Just mapped, yep. And and basically, when I plan the whole year, I, I the I, kind of the big rocks I put in first are the books of the Bible that we're going to study. And so in 2024, we have studied Song of Solomon, Colossians, and James. And I was so excited to be teaching James. I thought the fall would be an amazing time to teach James, just as People are getting into, not in getting into, they're in their fall rhythm, you know, and looking for practical wisdom, and the scripture offers us practical wisdom in all books, but James is known as being a practical, wise book. There's some, there's some callbacks to Proverbs mm-hmm. in the book of James. It's, 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 some would call it, it's a New Testament version of the book of Proverbs. So yeah. really wise, really practical. <clears throat> we also always do a fall outreach campaign where we challenge people to serve in our cities, to seek the good of our cities, to care for the poor and the marginalized and the vulnerable. And James does does really get in our faces about that, which we will see in coming weeks. Mm -hmm. So James, you know, multiple reasons I wanted to teach the book. It's a book in the Bible, and we continue just to trust God's Word, to trust that His Word's always going to meet us right where we are. I mean, it's inspired. It's not like any other book. You know, this is every word is inspired by him, breathed by him for us. And so it being a book in the Bible, awesome. It's a wise and practical book. I thought that'd be really helpful for people in a a fall season. And we want to sit under the authority of God's word. When we talk about serving our communities, James is great for that. So yeah, there's really multiple reasons that I wanted to teach the book of James. And then there's, and then wanted to teach it during this time. Yeah. And I have seen, gosh, people even over the last several days have told me that, oh man, James is my favorite book. I love, oh, I can't wait. I love the book of James. And I think of all of those people who say Mm -hmm. that they love the book of James, that they probably played sports in high school and felt loved when their coach yelled at them. (laughs) Because a very specific type of person. (laughs) Because James is in your, he's in your face. And now it takes a, per, a a certain kind of person who likes a coach like that. You know, my, my coach in high school, basketball coach, he, um, he would say, don't, <laughs> don't worry if I stop yelling at you. Mm. Wor- no, no, don't worry if I'm yelling at you. Worry if I stop yelling at you. Because he believed that, or he, or he was trying to get us to believe 
that as long as he was yelling at us, he was um, he still cared about us. Like he believed in us. He believed that his coaching yeah. us up would actually produce fruit. And so don't worry if I'm yelling at you, worry if I stop, because if I stop, that means I've given up on you. Yeah. And so if you had a coach like that and you like James, it's because you're like, wow, James believes in me. Wow. That's why he's being so in my face. Yes. And because James really, he really is. And it sure is. Yeah. He really is. Now, every book I um, preach is in that season, my favorite book. Yeah. But James is not my favorite book. <gasps> Gasp. O- outside of teaching it. I mean, I'm in it now. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm loving hanging out with with James. I mm-hmm. am loving studying this book and teaching this book to you. But I it's an it's been an acquired taste for me, the book of James, yet still God's word the whole time. So my favorite book people have heard me say is I love the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians and James are a bit are they mm. just have different angles. You know, mm-hmm. Galatians is what God used to crush me with the beauty of the gospel, the weight of I, there's nothing I can do at all that qualifies me. I can rest in him. He's the one who gives me rest. And then and then James is, um, if you're not careful, you'll misread James as a works-based book. Huh. So Martin Luther, he's the one who started the Protestant Reformation. So whenever I, I quote Martin Luther, I, I and I say the reformer, Martin Luther, um, he is he's the one who, you know, nailed the 95 theses to the to the door of the Catholic Church at the time, and and oh, the first theses being all of the Christian life is repentance, and he really two big aspects of the Reformation, one that is only by grace that we are that we belong to God, and two every single Christian is a priest. Every single Christian has oh. access to God. Every single Christian should be able to read the Bible. Every Christian can serve in wow. the name of Jesus. The two huge aspects of the of the Reformation. So one of my favorite books, I have it hanging on my wall, is Luther's um, commentary on the book of Galatians. And he he loved Galatians so much, Luther did. He His, his wife's name was Catherine and he called the book of Galatians his Catherine. Wow. Like, just, he said, I'm married to the, the book of Galatians. Wow. It's my Catherine. Um, he loved the book of Galatians so much, Luther did, because he was the he was the guy who got wrecked by grace. Yeah. So wow. because he got wrecked by grace, he loved Galatians so much, and he actually struggled with the book of James. Hmm. Luther did. What did he say about it? He, he had a called, funny quote he, about it. He has a famous quote about it. Um I mean, I, yeah, I completely disagree with it, but he... He's, you don't have to say it. I I'm set not, I'm you up for it. it. I'm going <laughs> to say it. I'm going to say it. He calls it uh, that the, the straw epistle. In other words, like, so, so Galatians being this beautiful, you know, rock solid gold, huh. and, you know, it's gold, and then James being like straw, but he was wrong. And, 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 I, and I think he realized, he, you know, he was just being transparent on, on his struggle with James. But but the reason I, I think he was sensitive is if you're not careful, you'll read James as, hey, here's here's a bunch of things I need to do to get God to love me. But that is clearly not what James is writing. I mean, this was the half-brother of Jesus whose life was changed by the grace yeah. of Jesus. And then he's now writing, here's how we live. Yeah. Here's how we live. So you just have to, as you read James, you know, we... We, we always read Scripture in light of the whole of Scripture. The whole of Scripture is that we are only made right with God by what Christ did for us, but because we've been made right by God, we now live this way. Yeah. And that's James' James' emphasis. You wow. know. And I love the book of James, so please do not hear me saying <laughs> I don't love the book of James, and I'm going to love studying the book of James with you. Yeah. But it's, um, I mean, get ready. Yeah, Because he's in, he's in our faces. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I'm excited. Yep. It's it's going to be great. I bet it's going to be a lot of people's favorite books by the I, end I, of the great. series. Yes. Hey, if your favorite book's a book in the Bible, we, <laughs> yeah. can, we can be friends. We can handle that. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's, that's great. Oh, I love it. Well, this week, kicking off in chapter one, and the title of this message was Treasure in the Trial, coming yep. straight from the text. 
so amazing. Uh, and you've already mentioned a little bit of what to consider when we're reading a book of the Bible, meaning considering the whole Bible. Yes. And then you mentioned another thing in your sermon, actually, which was talking about who this letter was written to. Yes. And you said it was mostly Jews. Yes. Why is that important for us? Yeah. The first Christians were all, the first early Christians were all Jewish. And then, and then when we see in the book of Acts, it starts to spread. So it goes to Samaritans, the gospel, it goes to Samaritans, goes to Gentiles. And so the, the gospel broke through to other cultures early, but still the first Christians were, were Jewish and they were facing, they were really facing persecution on multiple sides. So a lot of them, you know, in that, in Israel, this small area really of the world, right? And they get persecuted from their own people, from their own countrymen, the Jews, especially the religious leaders, who they did not at all appreciate that these early Christians were telling people, you don't need to worry about obeying every um, law that the Pharisees and Sadducees have given you. You just need to receive Jesus, and then, yes, he's going to write a new law in your heart, and you're going to live differently, yeah. but you're not trying to earn God by obeying all of the rules. Jesus has conquered the grave. Jesus fulfilled the law. Just trust Jesus. Just follow Jesus. So the religious leaders hated these early Christians. The Jewish religious leaders hated them. So there's that. And at the same time, the Roman Empire was fully in charge, and the Roman Empire hated the Christians. Now, you know, there's some writings you read where, because these early Christians were Jewish, how much of their persecution was because they were Jewish and how much of it was because they were Christian. And some Romans probably didn't even make that big of a distinction because both the Judaism and the Christian faith were, are monotheistic, meaning one God, right? They believe in one God. The Romans, if you only believed in one God, they didn't like that about you because if there was a famine or a plague or any kind of trouble, they wanted to be able to appease all the, the deities, all the little G-gods. In fact, there are some writings where they would call the early Christians atheist because they didn't believe in all the gods. Wow. They didn't believe in all the gods because they kept believing. They, they, we believe in God. We, we believe in one God. His name is Jesus. Wow. So if you're a Roman emperor and you hear of these Jewish people, they believe in one God. Then you hear these Christians, well, they still believe in one God, but they're just saying that the one God is Jesus. So they're being persecuted by these, these Christians that James is writing. They're being persecuted by the religious Jewish leaders, and they're being persecuted by Rome as well. And likely a lot of Roman citizens who just think they're bizarre that they, you're hurting us by not praying to these other gods. Wow. Like we're struggling because you are insisting on only worshiping one God. You should you should also join us in appe appeasing the other gods. Yeah, that's good for our countries if yeah. you appease the other gods. Yeah. So you atheists, why are you not offering sacrifices? So the, yes, and that's a, that's another good point. Will you expand on that because it wasn't just your you were not just affected by how you acted in the decisions you made, it was also the decisions of your community and your people group, totally. right? Yeah, so so very, they believed. Yeah, it was very communal society, right? So if a Christian is not worshiping some, you know, little G God, some deity, I suffer. They were probably fine that they were worshiping Jesus, but they weren't fine that they weren't worshiping other gods too. Dang. And so they're getting persecuted by Rome. Yeah. So the faith scatters. Yeah. So these early Christians, they, they scatter because of persecution. So we saw in verse 1, James, who grew up in the same house as Jesus, but now calls himself a servant of the Lord Jesus. I think you should answer the question, what it would take for your little brother. Oh, there's no way my little brother would ever. <laughs> it's impossible. Because I'm not, because I couldn't do what Jesus did, you know, because I couldn't walk out of the tomb. That's good. So uh, James says that about himself, and he writes, if you saw verse 1, to the scattered tribes, or to the 12 tribes. So Israel had 12 tribes. It's why we know he's writing initially to these Jewish Christians, and they're scattered because of persecution. And yet it's still applicable to us because, according to the Scripture, those of us who have believed in Jesus, we've been grafted into his people, 
So we've also been scattered. We're part of the scattered tribes. We live in different places and we've been scattered too. And just as the faith went with them as they were scattered, the faith should go with us as we've been scattered. Wow. So it's that's amazing. the intro to James. Isn't it awesome? It's so awesome. So maybe James is my favorite book now. That's just <laughs> that's just really fun. But it's so cool because all of that is just from the first verse. That's, for, that's verse one. Yeah. That's that, verse one. That's important to be it mindful is, it's of. It's important to understand. Yeah. And, and then you also realize then, wow, this letter was a part of what God used to change the world. Wow. Because now these early Christians, a couple decades after Jesus has been resurrected from the dead, they're reading this letter and as they tr- spread out, they obey the letter. They they treat people differently. They wow. talk differently. They care for the poor and the vulnerable. They they actually view the trial as having some treasure within there. Wow. They they hold tightly to the faith, yeah. and we are here listening to a, a podcast two thousand years later because the faith kept getting passed down from one generation to generation. And we're now reading this early document that that essentially turned the world upside down. Isn't it fun? That's, that's, what, we get to, that's what we get to study. That's so amazing. Why would we study anything else? Come on. Yeah. Come on. This is the Bible. It's the best. This is the best. <laughs> so good. And this weekend, this message was so, so careful and really kind to many who are experiencing trials currently. There and are very helpful for everybody else who either is coming out of one or going into one, right? Yes. You just shared that quote, I think, maybe with our, our team recently. It was like, every person is either going into a trial, mm-hmm. out of a trial, or is currently in right. one. So there's nobody that this isn't impacting. It's absolute you know? all of us. Yeah, yep. yeah. And it was a beautiful message. I'm so grateful. And I, I was stunned at just how you broke down how much we truly can receive from a trial that is good for us. And I'm, I'm caught, you know, I'm like, Oh man, that that's a lot of really good things that Mm -hmm. could come from something that's painful. Right. And you shared in the message about a, a, particular belief of masochism is that how you say it? I I think masses are those who like, they like, they like pain. Yeah. And, and to, the question I, I think I'm asking is, should I desire that? Like as a follower of Jesus, yeah. should I should I desire trial because of all that it brings me? Right. Um, maybe there's some you know super spiritual level you get to where the someone would say, I, I want the trial. If there's a level I've not I've not gotten to that place in my journey. I I'm not I don't want the trial. Yeah. I don't want the trial. Yeah. Uh, um I even though I know that there is going to be some treasure within there, just because I've walked with Jesus long enough to know that other trials I've gone through, that there's there's been beautiful fruit on the other side, I I, I don't want another one. I mean, I, I would like to God to figure out a way to get the fruit without the trial. Yes. Like, surely there's another way. And yeah. the, I mean, there, there are some other ways that we grow spiritually without a trial. You know, Luth, Luther, I quoted him, said, you know, you need you need the, you need the word. You need prayer. And you need you need trials. And so, God, I'll spend a whole bunch more time in the word this week if yes. if I can avoid another trial mm-hmm. right now. You know, mm-hmm. um, and so I I don't think it's wrong to not want the trial. Yeah. And then, but it is healthy to be able to consider that there's joy within the trial when the trial comes. Yeah. Yeah. That. That's super helpful. And I'm thinking about how I pray when I'm going through something yep. painful too. Like, God, take this away from me. You know, like we're we're not this this passage is not saying to not pray that, you know, like right. it's and not know, to Paul, ask Paul, for more of that. Paul prayed, you know, he had that yes. he called it the thorn in his flesh and he prayed three times for God to remove it. And God said, My grace is sufficient for you. Wow. And Paul then said that that trial, we don't even know exactly what it was. Some, some believe he had some type of eye problem because he would, and actually in Galatians, he says, look what large letters I use as yeah. he writes Galatians. Um, others say there was, there was some other type of trial in his life, but whatever it was, it was severe enough where, where he even had marker moments where he went with, to God and begged for God to take away, and God did not take the trial away. But so that Paul could learn, my grace is sufficient for you. Mm. 
And so Paul says he learned through that trial that God's grace is sufficient, wow. you know? Yeah. Yeah. There was, there was another word that was used in this chapter that is temptation. Yep. He says that a man should not say God is tempting me. Yes. So what is the difference between a trial and a temptation? Yep. Well, I'm glad we have the If I Had More Time podcast I because am too. because this is a, this is actually a fascinating discussion. I'll I'll try to be succinct in it. Uh, the word in the original language for trial and tempt- and temptation in chapter one is the same word. So some translators wrestle. I, I theologically we do make a distinction between trials and temptations, but yet, in a sense. It has to be true because it's the same Greek word in James chapter one that there that a temptation is a type of trial. So there there are trials that aren't temptations, but then there is a temptation. Then, but you could say that that a temptation is also a type of trial. Wow. Um, and then when it comes to the temptation, God's not gonna God's not tempting you to do evil. There's no way he's not evil. He's not tempted by evil. That's what James is saying. Hey, when it comes to a, when it comes to temptation, which is a part of a trial, yeah, um, that the temptation part, that's not God's not evil. He's not tempting you to do evil. The evil you desire you have is from your own sinfulness. Yeah. So he's he's doing a bit of a tangent. There, you know, with my hands, I have like this this big umbrella of trials. And watch then the but, YouTube. Just yeah, watch yeah, or you watch on YouTube. <laughs> There's the the umbrella of trials and. Um, temptation is a type of trial. It's a various type of trial. But when yeah. you're tempted, don't say it's God, because yeah. God can't be tempted. He doesn't tempt anyone. It, your temptation, it's because of your own yeah. sinful desire. But even that can be a trial that God grows you in as you learn how to overcome temptation, as you learn how to run away from temptation. Yeah. You can become a stronger Christian based on how you deal with temptation. Yeah. There's... And temptation is not the only kind of trial. Yeah. You know, someone's persecuting you. It's not because you... So, I mean, he's right. People were being persecuted, and they had not done... It wasn't their temptation. Yeah. Now, in the middle of the trial, they might be tempted yep. to not trust God, mm. you know, or they might be tempted to take advantage of somebody financially because they lost all their money, Yeah. you know? And, and so there is a mix sometimes of the overarching trial and temptation, and all James is saying is, hey, the temptation, that's, that's not God. That's you. Yeah. Fight, fight through it. Trust God. Don't trust yourself. Yeah. You know, you you're bringing up a little bit of how we respond in times of trials. And you yep. shared in your message about how trials prove authenticity yes. of things, both of God, who he is. He, I know God is real because of how he has been with me in my trials. Amen. You know, um, and also there are ways that our our faith is proven or not in our yep. time of trial. So would you would you just close us out speaking yeah. to that, encouraging us? It's really that that studying this passage for the message, it it really challenged me and motivated me in terms of my teaching to when we ask people to follow Jesus, that we emphasize that you get Jesus. Jesus is the best. You want Jesus. Mm-hmm. Because I I fear that sometimes say a parent so badly wants his or her son or daughter to follow Jesus, to get baptized, to stand up and say, I believe, to pray to receive Christ, whatever language is used, that they could say things like, hey, don't you want, don't you want God to give this to you? Don't you want this? And the person then can think, I'm, yeah, I'd like to follow Jesus for the, for him to give me a good job. I'd like to follow Jesus for mm. him to help me with my sports, or yeah. I want to follow Jesus because he's going to do this for me. Yeah. And then a trial hits, and the thing that the person was promised to get, if they follow Jesus, gets taken away. Mm. That is why it's important when we call people to faith in Jesus that we're calling them to faith in Jesus. Wow. Because you get Jesus. Because he's the best, because his forgiveness it overwhelms all of your shame, because his grace is sufficient, is the best, because you get mm-hmm. Jesus. So the person who's following Jesus, because they get Jesus, a trial comes, it, the trial 
pushes them closer to Jesus, proves yeah. their faith is authentic. The person who wasn't following Jesus for Jesus, but because, you know what, if I follow Jesus, maybe he'll give me a job, a relationship. He'll bless me financially. He'll, which is honestly a really scary thing to me of the prosperity gospel. Yes. Where people are told, if you believe in Jesus, you'll get all these things. Well, what happens when you don't get those things? Or what happens when you lose those things? Yeah. Well, if you were following Jesus just for those things and those things are gone, that's when I think people walk away. Yeah. And James is saying that proves you never really, you you had a Nike shirt, not a Nike shirt. <laughs> you know, you weren't really his because yeah. you weren't following Jesus for Jesus. Yeah. You were following Jesus for some stuff. Trials hit. The stuff went away. Yeah. Your faith really wasn't authentic. Yeah. But for those who you follow Jesus for Jesus, the trial comes, you get perseverance, you get endurance, your faith actually gets stronger. Yeah. It's beautiful. I love the word from the scripture that describes him as the treasure. Yes. He's the treasure. The, 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 in Philippians, it's he's the, the goal or the prize before us. Yes. You know, like, so beautiful. There's no one like, like Jesus. Nobody. Nobody. Yep. Well, man, it is in your face. James has already James proven already, it's in your face, but it is he's rich. Like, James would be like in a writer's conference saying, guys, you come stronger, you don't come at all. <laughs> Let's go. Let's tell these people what's up. That's James. So those of you who like the book of James, I know you. I know who you are. You like coaches <laughs> like that. That's what you want. That's so good. We should have an episode where you just do caricatures of every book of the Bible and see what they would be like. Yeah, that's what I should do. I should start that. <laughs> for the our next series. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us today on the If I Had More Time podcast hosted by Mariner's Church. We hope to see you next weekend at any of our congregations across Southern California or online. To view our service times at each congregation, be sure to check out our website at marinerschurch.org.